Hey everyone, I'm Andy and welcome to another episode of Easy Tiki Drinks. And today on the channel, we're going to be looking at a Don the Beachcomber Classic, Three Dots and a Dash. So, let's do this. So the three dots and a dash is super relevant considering the anniversary of an event that just happened. And if you stick around until after I build this thing, I'll tell you why it's so synonymous with this such event. But anyway, the three dots and a dash was created by Don the Beachcomber in and around World War II. We're not exactly quite sure when it started appearing on menus. I couldn't find any publicized date. If you happen to know the year that the three dots and the dash came out, please leave a comment below because I'd love to know. But anyway, this is a Dawn the Beachcomber Classic, so let's see what we're gonna need to make this awesome cocktail. First, we're gonna need an aged rum agricole. Aged Demerara rum. Falernum. Allspice dram. Honey syrup. Lemon juice. Sorry, lime juice. Orange juice and aromatic bitters. The aged rum agricole that I'm using is Clamont VSOP. The aged Demerara rum is Eldorado 12. The Falernum is homemade. The allspice dram is St. Elizabeth. The honey syrup is homemade. The lime juice and orange juice are fresh squeezed and the aromatic bitters are Angostura. Let's rearrange this. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of Don the Beachcomber classic flavors in here. We have the aromatic bitters, we have the rum agricole, we have the honey syrup, the falernum. Those are all really good classic Don the Beachcomber uh, ingredients. So we're gonna build this. I'm gonna talk about a unique format that I realize this follows. And I'm gonna talk about why this is so important to be doing today. Anyway, first off, we're gonna need one dash of our aromatic bitters. We need half an ounce of our orange juice. Half an ounce of our lime juice. half an ounce of our honey syrup. Quarter ounce of our falernum. Now I'm using my homemade falernum. If you wanna use John D. Taylor, by all means, please go for it. My falernum is designed to mimic the sweetness of the JDT, but it's got a more of a spice kick to it. So. If you happen to use JDT, it's gonna be the same sweetness. You don't need to adjust anything else. You're just not gonna have as much of a spice kick to it, which is fine. Quarter ounce of our velvet falernum. Quarter ounce of our allspice trim. Now again, I'm using San Elizabeth because I have it available to me, I can purchase it at Total Wines. If you can't get St. Elizabeth, another one is Hamilton Pimento Dram, or you can actually make your own, it's super easy. I have yet to do it, but it is on my list, so stay tuned. Quarter ounce. Next up, we need half ounce of our aged Demerara rum. I'm using Eldorado 12. Feel free to use an Eldorado 8 or a 15. You could also use a Hamilton 86. If you really want to kick it up a little bit, you could even go for a Plantation OFTD. Now again, that's not a full Demerara rum, but it definitely has enough Demerara notes that it would definitely sing in this cocktail. And it kicked the ABV up a little bit. That couldn't hurt. So we're gonna need half an ounce of our aged Demerara rum. Next up, let's talk about our aged rum agricole. Now the one that I'm using is Clement VSOP. It is an AOC Martinique rum agricole from now on to Martinique. This recipe comes to us from Martin Kate of Smuggler's Cove and he does recommend using an AOC Martinique rum agricole. Is that what Don used? We're not sure. 
To be honest, we don't really know. A lot of people surmise that back in the 1950s, well, 1940s, 50s, and 60s, the Martinique rum that we were getting was much different than what we get now. A lot of people thought that while the Martinique rum that we get now is from fresh pressed cane juice, that the Martinique rum we were getting back there was a molasses based rum, more similar to a Demerara rum or a Jamaican rum. So is this true? We don't know, but this is the best we can surmise from what we have at hand and what we've been able to work with in the past. And by we, I mean mostly the godfathers of Tiki, like, you know, Beach Bumberry, Martin Kate, a couple other people. So anyway, I'm gonna go with what Martin Kate recommend, and that is an aged AOC Martinique rum. Um, Clement VSOP is good. J rum JM makes a few. Pick what you like, as always. If you want to try to change it up, we do have some Demerara rum in this already. You could change this up and go with a full two ounces of Plantation OFTD and see how it turns out. I bet you it'd be delicious. But anyway, you're gonna need an ounce and a half of our aged rum agricole. This is also the rum that Beach Bomb Berry uses in his specific Mai Tai, which I did a video on and I'll link a card up here and a link in the description below. So if you happen to buy this, it, you're not gonna use it for only one drink. There is this, there is Beach Bomb's Mai Tai. There are a few others as well. Last Rites comes off the top of my head. So it's not a bad bottle to buy because you will go through it eventually. All right, I'm gonna grab our shaking tin. We're gonna add some ice. I'm gonna pour our cocktail in, give it a nice little whack, and then whip shake for about five to eight seconds. Crack this bad boy open. Now, originally this called for a specialty glass. Nobody really knows what that means. I've seen Collins glasses wrapped in napkins. I've seen Collins glasses Collins glasses wrapped in bamboo. I happen to have my everyday zombie Collins glass, so I'm just gonna use that. So we're gonna open Torin. Grab some more ice. Now, if you notice, as I fill this, right, the ice comes up and the drink doesn't match. If you want to kind of like get the drink to come up so you can add more ice, give it a nice little shake. That'll help settle the ice and bring the liquid up. As you can see, we're at the top now again. So we're just gonna add a little bit more ice. There. And knock over a bottle. All right. Now the garnish is a really cool part of this cocktail. So we're gonna start with a pineapple frond. Now this isn't typically called for, but I like it. I think it adds a little bit more to it. And then next up, our garnish is a pineapple spear plus three maraschino cherries. You could use blueberries, but essentially it's going to make three dots and a dash, the name of this cocktail. So we're just gonna lay that right on top. I'm gonna grab our straw, place that right in next to our, our pineapple frond. And there you have it, Dawn the Beachcomber's classic, three dots and a dash. Let's give it a try. So before I go into my tasting notes, I wanna talk about why this is such an important cocktail today. So not today, but yesterday was the anniversary of D-Day. The day that the Allied forces stormed Normandy Beach and what a lot of people consider the turning tide of World War II. So, why a three dots and a dash? Well, it's easy. Three dots and a dash is Morse code for victory. So since D-Day was basically the victory turning point for the Allied forces during World War II, what better way to celebrate than with a cocktail that's literally named Victory? I thought it was very fitting. I should have done it on D-Day's anniversary, but that was Monday, which I usually do a Mai Tai for, so I figured this was close enough. But anyway, what do I think of this cocktail? It's a great, wonderful cocktail that interestingly enough, follows a similar format to a lot of cocktails we've paid attention to. Let's break this out. We have two citruses that are half an ounce each, equaling one ounce of citrus. 
We have half an ounce of honey syrup, so a sweetener. And then we have half an ounce, quarter ounce and a quarter ounce of modifiers, followed by half an ounce and an ounce and a half of rum. So we've got an ounce of citrus, half an ounce of sweet, half an ounce of modifier, and two ounces of rum. That sounds familiar to anybody? Sounds familiar to me. Sounds a lot like a Mai Tai. Now we do add the Angostura bitters to help round everything out, and hopefully you don't drop yours off the table like I did mine. But anyway, as you can see, this really does follow the similar template. Why? Because it works. It's that simple. This cocktail is sweet and spicy. You're definitely getting that sweetness from that honey, but it is being cut through with that uh, acidity and that tartness from the lime juice. The orange juice is complementing the honey, especially since I use a orange blossom honey to do my honey syrup. That orange is really helping accentuate that. And then we've got this back note of just this spice from the falernum, ginger, clove, allspice from the allspice dram. And then at the forefront of it all, we've got a nice richness from this aged Demerara rum and a nice richness from this aged rum agricole, which has a lot of grassy notes to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Donna Beach Commerce Classic, three dots and a dash to help us celebrate the anniversary of D-Day. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click that little notification bell, go over on Instagram and TikTok, follow me there at Easy Tiki Drinks. And until next time, take it easy.